My name is William Kane, and I come from a small town called Winsboro, South Carolina. In Winsboro, South Carolina, our main focus was never really on academics. We focus on athletics, football, basketball. If something had a ball in your hand, we focus on that. When I was 16 in high school, I wasn't good at sports. Every time I played sports, somebody got hurt, usually me. So I decided instead of playing sports, I was going to work on my academics. And I thought, if I did well in my academics, my community would support me. I was wrong. My community didn't really care how well I did my academics because I wasn't a football player or a basketball player. During that time, I had three people that really supported me in my goals. My mother, my father, and my great-grandmother. But during the summer of my 16th year, my great-grandmother died of a stroke. And it killed me on the inside because I was mad. I was mad because I had questions that nobody could give me an answer to. I was mad because I didn't understand why did my great-grandmother have to die of a stroke or worse people on earth can die in their sleep. And so my anger changed me. I became a stereotype. I became an angry black male that nobody wanted to be around. I got in fights with my teachers, my classmates, I disrespected my parents, and I didn't care what I did. But somehow, I was still part of my school beta club, and a lady from the Boys and Girls Club came by and asked for volunteers. My mom found out about it, and she convinced me to go. And when I went there, I walked to the door, and a little girl walked up to me and said, Hi there, my name is Sierra. Do you want to be my friend? I don't know about you guys, but it's really hard to be mean to a seven-year-old little girl who wants to be your friend. So I said, Sure, I'm your friend. And so she grabbed my hand, she showed me around the building, and I enjoyed being there. Every day after I got out of high school, I went and volunteered at the Boys and Girls Club because I enjoyed working with those kids. I knew where those kids were coming from. They came from single parent households. They lived in low-income families. They lived in neighborhoods that had violence, drugs, and people that don't care about you unless you have football players. But the thing is, I didn't even keep those kids down. My kids wanted to be successful. They wanted to go to college and they wanted to have careers. And the best thing my kids told me was they wanted to be just like me when they grew up. But the thing is, I didn't want my kids to be like me during that time period. Yeah, I had too many negative characteristics I didn't want my kids to pick up on. And I said, I want to be a good role model for my kids. Because to my kids, I wasn't just a William Kane, a high school student. I was a William Kane. I was their brother, their father, their mentor, and a hero. I went back to high school, and I improved my grades. By my 12th grade year, I became one of the top students in my class, and I received a full-ride scholarship to the University of South Carolina based on my academics. I went back, and I changed my community. I became the president of my school beta club and leader of my school Rotary, Rotary Interactive Club. By my 12th grade year, my community mall selected me as the most outstanding student that came from my county. But the thing is, I wouldn't be here today without you all. Because thanks to your donation that went to the United Way, the United Way funded the Boys and Girls Club in my town. The Boys and Girls Club in Winsboro, South Carolina was 100% funded by the United Way. That means you all didn't donate, the United Way wouldn't have the money for it, and that means I wouldn't be here today. But right now, I am here because you all gave me a chance. And not just me, you gave me a chance to. You gave a chance to all the kids who've been through the Boys and Girls Club. A few weeks ago, I went back to my old site, and uh, I met one of my girls, and I talked to her. I met her in fourth grade. She's in sixth grade right now. And she said, Mr. William, I know where I want to go for college. And I said, where do you want to go? I want to go to the University of South Carolina. I said, OK, well, you know it's kind of hard to get into. So you sure you still want to go? And she looked me dead in my eyes. She said, I'm not asking to go. I know I'm going to go. She'll tell you, I know I can go to college. I know I can be successful. And I know I can do great things. That little kids in the Boys and Girls Club learn. They learn they become people they want to be. It doesn't matter they want to be the president, senators, doctors, lawyers. The Boys and Girls Club helped them do that. More than 100 kids who live in bad neighborhoods can go to the Boys and Girls Club after they get out of school and become successful people, where they can have a good time and become people they want to be. Thanks to you all, I became the man I always wanted to be. I went to college and became the first person in my family to go to college. I majored in political science. And I planned to go to Georgetown Law School after I finished my four years and then coming back to my community to give back because y'all gave back to me. If y'all didn't give back to me, I wouldn't be here today. And thanks to your contributions, those kids know that somebody out there is looking out for them. Y'all became the leaders in your community and said, I want to donate to United Way so I can make a change in somebody's life. That life is being changed right now. So on behalf of my kids from the Ben Arnold, Giger, Fairfield, White Knoll, and Walking Net sites, I want to say thank you for my kids. Because even though you might not see them in your lifetime or theirs, those kids are going to be successful. I want to say thank you for myself. Because you all gave me a chance to become a man I really am proud of. That my mother, my father, you not wear the Midlands, the Boys and Girls Club in the Midlands, and my community are proud of. So as I finish my speech up, I would like to say thank you for listening, thank you for funding, and most of all, thank you for caring. Thank you. My name is Nicole. I work in Department 432. I'm a material handler for meat inspection. I have two children. I have a seven-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl, and they attend the Boys and Girls Club after-school program. Um, my son was recently diagnosed with ADD, and the Boys and Girls Club is good because he gets to go there after school. They help him with his homework. His grades have improved. He gets to play with other children that he normally wouldn't 
have interaction with, and my daughter loves it because she just gets to hang out with her friends. For a six-year-old, my son was bringing home, like, Fs, and he's improved greatly. My son brought home a, two Bs the other day, like two Bs, and I know that may not seem like a lot to some people. They feel like, you know, things that he should know, but the way that they're teaching him in his math and the way that his reading has excelled is, is great. I, I mean, I'm happy. Like I said, my son before, he wasn't really into sports, but now that they have like an hour of activity, they do different activities every day, he'll actually go out and play flag, flag football. And then I'm glad that they introduced it to him, and I'm glad that he's, he's able to do it. What made me want to sign my children up for it was because, one, it was affordable. It's $3 a day, it's based off your income, and I would give anything for my children to be able to explore and for, just to help them out with something to do every day after school. My name is Glenda O'Brien and uh, I'm the plant manager here at the Kraft Foods facility and uh, I'm also coincidentally uh, the co-chair for United Way in Newberry County and I also sit on the board of the United Way of Midlands. We're here today to talk about United Way and you just heard some really compelling stories from two people who have really benefited from the type of support that United Way gives agencies in this area. And you know, what's not to like about it? As low as $3 a week can make a huge difference in someone's life. And so why do we here in our factory really make a big deal about United Way? Because of all of the good work it does and the fact that many of you I know know people who benefit from this agency. We make it easy for you. We have a payroll deduction. That payroll deduction is as simple as that one McDonald's meal a week that you give up. And again, look at the difference you can make. This year, we're looking to increase our campaign by almost 10% to $165,000. We'd like to at least get half of the people in this factory, and I'd like to shoot for the moon and go for 100%, but half of the people in this factory to give that at least that $3 a week. There are a lot of new employees in our factory this year. Many of you may not be aware of United Way, and really what we need from you is to consider that $3 a week as your personal contribution to making this state a better place to live. Specifically this county, but also the county that you might live in, because United Way operates throughout our state. So, that $3 a week, we need you. We need at least 300 new givers to make that target. Uh, we have a, a, a target in the county as well, in, in the uh, Newberry area, of $265,000. Historically, this plant has given a large amount of that. This year, we've been able to bring on extra, extra plants that are also running campaigns. So now you're one of many factories here, but they still really need all of the good employees here in Kraft to help us cross that, uh, that magical number. So 165 is what we're shooting for. We already have, that I'm aware of, at least $3,500 in the pot from our wonderful um, kickoff campaign of making your manager dress up like a turkey, of putting your manager in jail, and everybody had a lot of fun and we were able to put some money into that thermometer. So watch for that thermometer, listen at the end of the month when we get in front of you with even more compelling reasons, and think about uh, what your dollars can do for our county and for this factory and everyone that you love and know who might need this assistance someday. So again, in closing, what I would like to ask each and every one of you, whether you've been a long-time giver of United Way in our factory, whether you're one of those 300 new employees we need to open your, your heart and your purse, we'd really like you to get engaged and watch for all the details coming at the end of the month in our employee meetings as well as postings around the plant. It's that simple payroll deduction. We need you. United Way needs you and your family and friends and other folks that you heard about will really benefit from your generous contribution. Thank you very much.